So I decided to do a little video on the four-pack solenoid assembly that exists on the 2010 Volvo, like mine, and others as well. Here's an old one. They connect together in tandem, basically a frame support cross member. So the function of these, one is for the air horns, which I didn't know about till today, searching it out a little bit. And also the suspension dump for the tandems on the truck, which you need a lot, and mine is, has failed, doesn't work. Also the axle interlock, which locks the rear axle, axle three to axle two. And last but not least, the fifth wheel slide, uh, which maybe doesn't get used too much. I actually don't use it very much at all. But anyways, it's hard to find information on these. So I decided that I'll share my little bit of experience. I mean, I even went to the Volvo dealer to get a couple new solenoids that I needed and asked them some of, these, some of the questions I had and they couldn't even really answer them or how to change out the pins that go into the connector on it, all that. So figured some of that out. I had already disassembled the four pack, which was a bear in and of itself, but that's okay. When I reassemble it, you'll see how it goes on there and by extension, obviously how it comes off as well. So there it is on the cross member just before I had it off. And here it is after I had it removed. Well, I'm really happy to have figured this out. I was trying to figure out how to get these pins out of here because I need to replace three of these. These two don't work at all. And this one is on its last legs, I think. It's a tiny little click and not very much airflow coming out, even though it's 20 ohms and 20 ohms on the good one. Something about the uh, mechanics or whatever, this one is on its last legs. But anyways, they don't. these connectors don't, don't come off. And the new ones, they just give you the wires the terminals at the end and they're the same ones that are in here but I couldn't figure out how to how to get those pins out so then I started poking around here and the little on these little tools discovered you can pull this plastic insert out there we go so now I got access but now I'm gonna pull the, the pins out that I need to and and insert the new ones as necessary I was gonna snip these lines and I didn't want to do that to make the connections to the new one when they already give you the terminals which seem to be made to go in here and they are so yes very happy to discover that i took this whole thing into volvo when i picked up the new solenoids and uh asked them about it and they couldn't answer the question either so apparently it's not something they do too often but I'm kind of surprised because i got three bad solenoids in my pack one is the only good one is one that's obviously been changed already the one with the longer cable. There's so many variations, so nobody knows everything. But I'm gonna change this one out here, or pull it. Okay, so you look inside there. It's a little plastic tab. I'm just gonna take my tool and uh, just pull that tab, stick my tool in there to spread that tab out, and then it pops right out. Awesome, simple. Okay, all three are disconnected except solenoid number one. So that's great, it only took about a minute. To disassemble these, it's real simple. You just give a twist and it's off. This one, give a twist and it's off. Give a twist and it's off. Give a twist, it's just getting redundant and it's off. There we go, my one good solenoid. These are getting replaced. Okay, now I'll disconnect the fifth wheel slide. It's free. Let me go under and see which number that one is. Is that gonna be one, two, four? I don't know, we'll find out. Okay, well here's line number four. Yep, I can blow air through it. Okay, that was line number four, what I'm calling solenoid number four. Stick this back in. Okay, I'm going to remove the axle interlock air hose. There we go. So I'll see which of my hoses underneath correspond to that one. Well, that was easy enough. That was number three. The way I'm defining it. There we go. Now let's do the tandem air dump. 
the suspension dump control unit is here valve system whatever and uh you know you got the the variable weight aspect of it too on this lever to determine how much air goes in the bags which are flat right now and the the lines from each of the airbags so here's the little line coming in so i'm gonna remove that there we go okay so the suspension dump is it two or one i'm not gonna bank any money on either but let me try number two sure is that is free and open number one which has just a slight leak in it is a big mystery i just figured out that number one solenoid is for the original air horn line which is red and uh this is non-functional anyway these are wussy air horns two new systems have been added the really good one i put in and a guy put one in be before i had this truck which are all manually operated let me take this opportunity to show you my amazing air horn system that i installed check out the video on that if i've posted it yet so a summary of the situation here is the one that was replaced doesn't have a color on here but i noticed these others are color coded black number two is for suspension dump. Number three, silver, is the axle interlock. And four, yellow, is the fifth wheel slide. And basically that corresponds to the cable colors on the truck. But you can't really go by that because these things fail. You gotta replace pieces of it. So you replace it with a black one or whatever because the color isn't very functional. But that's how the factory starts out with it. So anyways, what I'm gonna do, this one, which is the only good one, the only good one in the group, is for the horn that's non-functional. So I'm gonna use this one for the fifth wheel slide since I hardly ever use that, it's perfectly good. And I'm going to only put three back in here. So I'm just gonna put in three and I'll keep one of these as a spare, one of the brand new ones. Cause they're, you know, they're a couple hundred bucks. So it'd be nice to have a spare. So I'll rewire this thing and get it back installed. Notice my suspension dump solenoid has a nice crack. Well, it's no wonder that that just recently gave out. Here's my rather cryptic description of the function of each of the solenoids here. One, two, three, four. I'm starting number one with a three eighths inch input line for basically like a common rail pressure system. And um, so I define what pin numbers each one has. Plus and minus. Plus is red, black is minus. And then the male connector, at least the, the connector that has the pins in it, are oriented like this and I show what pin numbers each one is so if anyone is interested so what I had a solenoid number one is now going to be number four for the suspension dump so I need to pull these pins out I'm only going to connect three together I put a little bit of mineral oil on these uh, o-rings just to lubricate it a little bit So this will be the end one. There we go. Here we go, it's now a three bank instead of a four bank. Although on second thought, the holes in the frame are for number one and number four. So I'm gonna have to put a dummy one in here and get the holes all to align up. I'll put one of the bad ones in. We'll take the one with the crack, how's that? Okay. So that's how it'll mount in the frame. Now I'll put all the pins correctly into this connector based on my previous definitions here. Okay, there she is all wired up and ready to install. I ended up putting the pins for number one here, which is a dummy. I put them in also because quite frankly, it seals up the back of the connector. So you don't want any opening there. The whole thing will get corrupted 
and we don't need that. After the pins are installed, you can stick this plastic, apparently ambidextrous, frame here back in pushes in real easy holds everything together there we go okay there she is installed taped up pins all in ready for action these nuts and bolts were really rough getting off off the frame of the truck so i'm gonna tap and die them just for good measure it's a metric 12 by 1.75 pitch These are the rougher ones. Okay. Now these things will go on like a dream. Look at that, just spins right on. Like they're new. Here's the bank. Solenoids mounts in here. One thing that has to be done, there's this uh, lateral acceleration sensor, Bendix unit, that bolts onto the frame in such a way that it has to be undone and moved out of the way in order to get the, a socket onto the nut here. So that was kind of irritating, a little bit irritating, a little bit of a pain. And when I disassembled this, to get that off, I couldn't get it off, especially grabbing from behind. It's hard to get a good grip on it with a socket or wrench. So I had to heat it a little bit. And when heating it, flame went through and ruptured a hose behind the frame because I didn't know the, fr the flame was going through another hole. So that was a whole other thing. So be careful about that if you're doing this job. So our first thing is to get those big bolts mounted into here. Get that on, then reattach this, and then connect everything up. That nut goes on so easy now, it's almost too easy after treating it with a tap and die. Still gonna put a little anti-seize on it. Things get rusted and corrupted really quickly in the trucking environment. Funny, those holes are really big. There's a lot of play in there. I think I'll lift it a little bit. 17 millimeter socket in the back and 18 millimeter nut, which is kind of weird, right? 17 and 18, I don't know why they did it that way. Maybe it wasn't always that way, I don't know. I've got about a six inch extension on there, approximately. Okay, she's physically mounted. Now we gotta fight this Bendix, what they call a lateral acceleration ESP sensor, these weird names. But actually, pretty sure I know what this does. I experienced it on my trips to Alaska, going up there, being on these windy roads, and if you're going around a corner too fast, it senses that lateral acceleration and applies brakes in a certain way. So that's a pretty ingenious little concept. First time I felt that, I was like, whoa. I knew I was going around the corner kind of fast, but it just automatically slowed me down as I was kind of, I guess, barreling into the corner a little faster than they thought was safe. Probably a good thing to have. That thing is really rusted out. I didn't get that bolt all the way out. This other one I had to take completely out. Otherwise, it wouldn't have, uh, would not have been able to rotate out of the way to get access to this nut. See, when it's in place, it's like this. It's right up against that nut. I mean, you, you can't get a socket on the nut. It's right up against it. Kind of goofy. I don't like those kind of things. Yeah, and there's these other holes I didn't see. I had the flame on that nut and went through and ruptured a fuel line. And you can't get a socket in the back. You get an open-end wrench. Put the flare wrench on there. Is that like a socket, but based on, there's another unit there that's keeping you from doing that. And if you don't know the story, the story is this. Sometimes you just gotta persuade it. And that persuasion comes in different forms and intensities. 
depending on the circumstances. Okay, that's not even budging. All right, that's tightening up. There we go. That's all tight. This is tight. Maybe I should have a more heavy duty tie wrap. I don't know. That should be good. All right, there's the common rail connection. Connection number one. Number two. Number three, and number four. Okay, those all felt good. Okay, and now the main connector electrically. There we go, I heard it click. We'll put another tie wrap here. We want everything nice and nip and tuck. I think it's time to test out the function. <laughs> 